Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Sub-Saharan Africa, Algeria's embattled president is to resign before the end of his term. This looks like it was effectively the outcome of a compromise between the army and the Bouteflika faction after the statement by the chief of staff, said Riccardo Fabiani. Fabiani said the latest arrangement was all part of their script. This script is always the same. The regime, even though it's divided internally, doesn't want to let go of power, he said. They're open to the transition, but only on their terms. Plus ça change, plus ça même chose, seems to be what he's saying. And I take you back to Kapuczynski, who said, if the crowd disperses, goes home, does not reassemble, we say the revolution is over. He wrote that in the Shah of Shahs. But the point is, the crowd grew, did not disperse, did not go home. That was part of the problem. And then Kapuczynski, again, in the same book, when he's describing the revolutionary moment, and this seems to be a very manufactured and managed slow motion revolution but he said the choice of that moment is the greatest riddle of history of course the head of the army in algeria who's no spring chicken himself going by the photographs is trying to remove bouteflika the wheelchair bound who might be remembered in the history books as bouteflika the sticky this is under article 102 i said then in africa in particular a lot of leadership is in the departure lounge i've just been at my age um, but Bouteflika is surely the most extreme example. Very interesting article in Business Week. Sudan's bid to fit, feed the Middle East left its own people furious. Don't feed your own people. Oof. When the Jordanian army went shopping for land in northern Sudan in late 1999, its scouts came across what appeared to be a food-growing paradise. The terrain was vast, flat, and fat with nutrients. The water could draw from the nearby Nile was almost embarrassingly bountiful. Local officials were bending over backward to offer favorable financial terms. It all seemed like a can't-miss opportunity to supplement Jordan's national food supply while turning a tidy profit. The military pension fund snapped up 9,000 acres of backcountry scrub three hours' drive north of Khartoum and the farmhands got to work. Soon afterwards, as news of potential riches spread, the surrounding land began filling up. Pakistani company leased a large plot to the south. Syrians began farming to the north. Emiratis, Lebanese, Yemenis and others acquired 100,000 plus acres apiece. And he couldn't keep the price of bread down. Dear, dear. Anyway, very in-depth article, and if, you know, you, do, you have a read. Um, and I've written about him separately. I said he's a political Harry Houdini. Otherwise, he will not have lasted more than three decades. But it's clear to me these are the last days or the end times. And then I was quoting uh, an old Sudanese revolutionary song: "We sing in our prison as you tremble in your castle." South African all shares having a good year. It's up 8.29% year to date, dollar versus rand. At 14.22, I would sell the rand. Egyptian pound, 17.3033. Uh, Nigerian all share down 2.86% year to date. Ghana left interest rates unchanged as expected. FX reserves $10 billion thanks to the Eurobond or nearly 20% of GDP. That's Charlie Robertson. Ghana Stock Exchange is down 3.49% year-to-date. MasterCard to join investors in Africa online retailer Jumia has agreed to invest 50 million euros in a private placement ahead of the online retailer's planned IPO in New York. Joins Perno Ricard, which has a 5.1% stake, MTN and Rocket Internet. Perno deal valued Jumia at 1.4 billion euros. Um, and it's looking to sell 13.5 million ADRs at between 13 to 16 dollars, raising as much as 216 million dollars. January last year, I said e commerce and home based deliveries have changed the world from London to China, and I'm certain the same disruption has headed our way.